Good morning. Uh, yeah, that's a crowd. <laughs> okay, uh, I will ask you to help me with this presentation a little bit. So I want you to close your eyes if you can, please. Okay, uh, breathe in and out, relax. I want you to imagine while you are closing your eyes that there is a young girl in a garden where there is beautiful flowers in different colors. These flowers resemble hopes and dreams that her future carrying for her. And she is playing with a very beautiful Parpi doll, running in between a very beautiful purple flowers, carrying love, a smile on her cheek, loving out of happiness. And she is surrounded with love and support. Another press, please. Now, light is off. Darkness has fallen all over the place. Flowers died. And the little ponytail girl now running out of fear. Because of those hundreds of hands that are trying to grab her arms, legs, clothes, and cutting all the flowers which she is carrying or they are carrying to her dreams and support. Open your eyes, please. I want you to ask yourself which situation you want your girl, your children, siblings, family to be in and keep this for you for now. Since I was just a little girl with a ponytail, uh, everyone was trying to shape my life. My parents, they were great parents, <laughs> but they were always trying to like make me the doctor and get high schools. And the worst thing that I had to live in the shadow, why the hell I, didn't, I wasn't born as a boy, as my father wanted, of course. <laughs> and my father was a great man. He was kind, helping everyone, doing a lot of charity, and friends of everyone. And this kind of facts, I knew the day he died. He lived his own life in the shadow of the custom and the tradition of uh, Egyptian guy or Egyptian man. So, like, men should show no weakness. You should not kiss your little girl because that will spoil her. And you should have a boy, not a girl, as a baby. So he was trying to raise me as a boy, and that was not easy. I was doing karate because I wanted to be a boy. And despite that, I always respected him and honored him. And even I have always tried to let him see that Girls and women can achieve something, can be a pride, not a shame or weakness. But I couldn't finish that mission. He passed away because of the lack of resources and the health inequity issues that we face in the slum area I live in. But this is not a story. The story started when he passed away and we found ourselves that we are two young children, girls, with our housewife mother. And when our families tried to put me in an arranged marriage with her, I was so young and get my sister out of school. Yesterday when I was listening to this amazing equity talks, I felt it, I was deeply touched because I am the girl and the children as a child that live in the shadow of diabetes. I'm the one who lost her father and I am and I am and I am. You can think about any challenge that a girl or a woman might face in her, her life, and you will find that in Nagla's life storybook. <laughs> Starting from FGM, harassment, rape, discrimination, violation, gender-based violence, etc. This fellowship reminded me of who really am I, and how many challenges I have to take and went through to be here today. And the leadership situation that I had to stand up and say, I am here, I have a right, either to save my life or my sister's future. There is a song I used to uh, hear and to be repeated in my ears. If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. Yeah, Sister Act movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a big fan of Sister Act, and I am. <laughs> okay. I didn't know exactly what that was, and I, I, did, I wasn't practicing good English by then. But 
from the movie and from the song, I really knew that hard working matters and you can face any challenges, any stigma. And the most important thing is that you can help others with hard working. My health equity project, I can say it's a brand new thing. I already implemented two phases of it. I, I have a, like five phases plan. And through this fellowship, I implemented the third one. But it was completely different. I, I took what I have learned and what my mentors, my coaches put in me back to the field, back to my team. And through like following the steps of the great leadership sessions and all the leadership assignments, <laughs> uh, it pushed me, not only me, but my whole leadership team and even my initiatives beyond of our dreams, our expectations. I never thought even I had the power to work with people with disability. Imagine I worked with children with disability. My initiative aims to address the health equity issues in marginalized villages through inventing new tools that raise health awareness of young leaders and children and teach them how to face the pandemic health uh, challenges too. We added that after the corona. While I was attending the disability health inequity session, I knew facts that we didn't knew before while I was studying at mid school. I knew numbers and needs for people with disability. So I was like very excited. I remember when Dr. K told us, you will change your organizational statement through the fellowship. I went back to my team. We gathered, we did like remap our actors. We like changed the leadership profile team and we challenged ourselves so hard to develop new games that can make the children with disability feel they are able, they are included, they can learn as much as any other children. And the amazing thing is that we convinced it once more our donor, and that was a huge dilemma, <laughs> to refund us again. And we implemented the initiative many times all over Egypt. We trained a new team, we, chal we challenged ourselves once more and once more and once more, and we did it. We raised the awareness of the children with the needed health information to survive the daily challenges they face. And we made that also not only for children with disability, but also for normal children. We combined them and that was great. But also the most important thing that I have learned, I learned how to delegate leadership. And that was hard. I did it many times, but I didn't succeed, but now I did it accurately and successfully. Until we reached thousands of children all over Egypt, very far away from home. My life as a doctor is not that easy, either on the professional level or on the personal level. I face different types of challenges, disappointment, disencouragement, and that hurts because it's from the people who are close to me. I'm this kind of person who learn first, teach, impact and implement in person, other person's lives. But unfortunately, I'm also a person who never think about themselves, who always underestimate themselves. And this fellowship and through this fellowship, I learned how to appreciate myself how to empower others while empowering the leader in me. How to see the change that we're actually doing in the community, not only as Nagla, but as my whole team, my famous Giat team, or I prefer to say Giat family, because we are a family. We cry like a family, we fight like a family, <laughs> we do everything like a family. <laughs> yeah, I developed this family uh, eight years ago once I was selected as a global youth ambassador for Egypt by Ban Ki-moon, that was like an honoring position for the work I do in the community. I think you all guys know Malala. She was a fellow and she was a Gaia. And I met her. And I, 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 uh, I said to myself, yeah, she got her Nobel Prize and she had a voice because the famous story of Malala. But what about girls back in my home who don't have a voice? What about women that suffer a daily violence and rights violation? Who can do anything about it? And what about youth who feel different 
and feel frustrated because they are different? Who is delivering their voice? Who is pushing them to find peace and, and fight for, for themselves and find their passion? And I challenged myself more. Can I be that voice? Can I be a change maker? Yeah. By then, everyone was like judging me and loving, la laughing at me because I was spending more time volunteering than studying to get A plus at, at medical school. So I said to myself, can I, can I, can I? Big fat I. Because that I resembled like, who am I in the community? What do I have? Do I have resources? Do I have money? Do I have power? Do I have a team? I, I was by myself. Yeah, multiple questions with doubtful thoughts. But I said, like in the English movie, hell yeah, I can. Like I, was, I really wanted to say that one day. <laughs> so, and I started, OK, what, what I need? OK, I need people who believe in the passion or, and the, in the vision I have in the community. And I gathered one or two friends. And one of them now is my brother-in-law. <laughs> the family got like <laughs> connected. <laughs> and we started the thing that called Giat family. And now this family have empowered hundreds of youth, helped thousands of women and girls, even 3,000 refugees, Syrian women. And they trained many and many of young leaders that I am really proud of because they are now stakeholders and, and or, uh, like leaders of our organization. And we are now a global award winner. And most importantly to us, we drew a smile on hundreds of children's faces. We did it despite we have no money, no support. We are just a network. We are not registered. And that's a very difficult thing in Egypt. Because we did it because we believed. We believed in ourselves. We believed in the change we want to see. And we wrote, like, in our church, we are believers, we are doers. And we believe in the community we want to live in. And I really hope that we will continue that. This kind of words, I never thought that I will be here <laughs> talking about it. But this fellowship made me realize it. The past few months like, carry a very dear, appreciated moment to my heart. I'm sorry for what I'm going to say, but that moment when Dr. Sibley tried to empower me and say, oh, Nagla, you are so great in the coaching moment. And the hour I spent with the greatest, Dr. James, as supporting me and as supporting my initiative and trying hard. I never saw someone who can try hard for someone else like that. I never expected to have such a great mentor. And the most mo powerful moment which helped me find my power once again, and myself once more, and appreciated who really is Nagla, and know that I am valuable, not invaluable, are the coaching hours with Dr. Kate. She always said to me, you will make it, you will do it. And that meant the world to me. This moment made me believe again, pushed me through myself, through my hardness, my sadness, to find peace and power, not only in me, but in my whole team. Why? Because two years ago, I stopped going to the field. I stopped doing community service. I was just supervising it, supervising my team, just supervising. Because we lost our partner, Misha, and the one who dreamed of a smile on each child's face. But after this mentoring and coaching hours, I went back with power and the pride again in what we do and what we are and witnessed the, the success and the change we do in the community. And we and re-inspired my team once more. And that made them say, we are so thankful for whatever you do at this fellowship because they brought to us our leader back. Yeah, brought to us our leader back. This, this sentence. I didn't realize that I wasn't there for them, that I lost my spirit for a while, that I stopped go to the field, I stopped inspiring him, them, I stopped being the power they, they really saw in me. Because I 
I didn't only lose Misha. Yeah, he, he is 23 years old medical student, amazing volunteer and community leader. But also my teammate left me behind. They didn't give me the hand that they always said they will give in hard times. They didn't give me the shelter for my pain. They didn't like hold my hand and say, you can make it, you will survive. They did it. I became so sick. I was pregnant at the corona pandemic thing. And I, I, I was like going to the emergency room many times, sick and tired, until I give birth to that troublemaker <laughs> little boy, corona baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like in the middle of the pandemic. I was like even giving birth alone. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> yeah, at the corona time, I, I fought back. I, I empowered 50 young leaders. I, I like we saved the life of 2,500 children. Yeah, we did that, but still can't move. Broken, no trust. And suddenly while I was working and reporting for the initiative, I found something called Atlantic Fellowship. Yeah, I don't even know what is Atlantic. I know that there is an America and there is Africa. I don't know what is Atlantic, okay? And email after an email, video. That was scary for me to record an interview video. And the interview was three amazing women who were crying because of my story. And they were saying, my story, okay. And then, congratulations email, yay, you did it. But I like, looked around, there is no one to celebrate with. And now, eight months later, I'm here. I face the same challenges, even more, but as strong as I should be, as powerful as I used to be, and as role model as my partner Misha saw me all his life. And I know that he is proud and I will make him proud as much as I can. And I will put a smile on every children's face till my last breath. Even we have changed our team name to Misha Family, which resembles motivational, inspirational, special, helpful, active family. I learned from every single session and from every single fellow something new. I had the power and support from every moment in this fellowship, from Olivia email, from Dr. Gwen and Dr. Salam saying something at the end of the session that even that, I, I learned something from me. I never thought I will be here talking alone, but not alone, because I have a family and I have a supporter. And this family helped me to draw another dream for each girl to stand up, for each child at marginalized area to help them to have the health, to have the right of health. I always believed that doctors are not only taught to heal, but they can be actors and they can invent and they can empower others to change. And by being here, I knew that I am not alone. There is hope, there is believers, and there is actors. Do you still, do you still remember that ponytail girl? but in the dark, in the darkness where the flower is, has died. This is my life. <laughs> and it, this is okay now, because I learned how to put, bring the light back in my life, and I learned how to search for the sun in my life. I always repeat to myself, be the change you want to see in the future. Changing the world starts by changing yourself. I still face the same challenges, because the world still needs a hand. But at least I have a backbone that I can lean on. It's called FHE family. So let's take all what we have learned here for a better future and continue what we have learned and the memories we have and spread that among our family, our co-workers, and know well that by changing one life, you are changing a million. That's a start for a million. So let's start with the 20 million we have here in the room. Thank you.